Hi, so if you're having trouble getting your drawing to look like your reference, uh, today I'm going to be talking, giving you some tips on how to get those values right, how to get things to look a little bit more real uh, from your reference. Hi, my name is Luis Escobar. I'm a storyboard artist in The Simpsons Television Show. I've been working on the show for over 25 years now, and I'm here to empower you. So I've got a question from um, somebody who's been following me, and they emailed me and asked me, um, she's, they're, they're having trouble uh, capturing their reference. And uh, this is, I, I have this picture here. This is probably not what she, uh, she used. Um, I, I, think, I think she obviously used something else. I, I should have asked her uh, to send me uh, her reference, but it, it, it's irrelevant to this conversation. And, and, and one of the things that I do like is that she, she did say that every single time she gets frustrated, she starts drawing features. That's excellent, excellent uh, to do that, uh, drawing features. And I, I kind of recommended Bridgman to her just because he's got really good construction. And I've got videos on, um, on eye construction and nose construction and, and how to use Bridgman and to study. So uh, I'll link to those in the description of this video. But let's take a look. Let's take a look at these. And, and so w one of the things that she kept on saying was um, that these characters, um, the, these drawings look too cartoony to her. And to me, they don't look cartoony. They don't. But but to her, the the the, the accuracy of the drawing itself was a frustration. It doesn't quite hit the mark that she has in her head and I, I totally understand that she she wants it to feel more natural and, uh, and one of the things I do like about this is that she's I don't know what she's doing something really right here because she's capturing these plane changes and they're really working so the 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 problem isn't that she isn't seeing the plane changes. The problem, I think, is with her values and and what she is actually seeing in the drawing itself. Um, there is a little bit of. Um, construction that isn't quite there quite yet but it's it's really really close and I mean it's it's not a it's not bad like I, I, I like where this is headed I like her skill level where she's at okay but 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 we do need to get a little bit more accurate when it comes to uh, values and I think that's part of the problem that we aren't getting the right lights and dark combination so let me let me clarify what I mean by values so let me let me see what kind of pencil I've, uh, I've got activated here I don't want that one I'm gonna have the rough pencil here Give me some black that's good all right so let's talk about this so what do I mean so let's say we, we'll have we'll take the same subject matter here. Let's zoom in. So what I mean by value getting the right values is this. When we're when we're looking at a draw uh, like a, a reference, um, the line that we draw is just a placeholder. It's not really the it, 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 it's meant to be a, a kind of a, a temporary thing. Uh, we're we don't draw we don't we draw lines because uh, uh, that's that's what making the marks are on the on the sheet of paper. However, what we see is plane changes in the same way that 
Uh, for example, uh, if I was to draw a box, a box doesn't look like this to us, right? We don't see a box because we see lines of a box. We see a box because we see I don't even know what this is. Is this a marker? Wow. <laughs> I must have picked a marker. Okay, not the most clean, cleanest drawing ever, but uh, I think you, you understand what I'm saying. We don't see a box because we see lines. We see a box because we see color changes, value changes. This side is darker than that, that side is darker than that, this side is lighter up here, and therefore we see the light changes is what actually makes us able to see the box. The line work that we draw when we're drawing is meant to abstract this notion. So I don't know how accurate my drawing is going to be. I'm going to be going as fast as I possibly can just to try to get to the point. Now when, when we're when we're doing a drawing of anybody, um, we're still I'm I'm thinking of those plane changes in a in a boxy way. I'm just doing this so fast. So I'm, I'm hoping that I'm gonna get some kind of accurate representation of this guy. But most of what I'm doing here is I'm thinking about plane changes, thinking about plane changes. Um, how do I represent, how do I talk about plane changes, the, 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 the planes of the head? So I'm going to see if I can find something really quick that I could uh, explain, I could show you what I mean. Okay, so I brought some, some information in here. Let me show you. So here's what I mean by plane, plane changes. What, what makes, just like my, my box, you could break up the face, just like this box, you could break up the face into planar shapes that, that make it a little bit more boxy. And the thing is that when you, when you paint a box like this, when you're doing values with a box, um, it's very clear. This is, this is this side, this is this side, this is this side. So the head can be broken down into something very similar, which allows us to more easily see how light hits a head. So when we have a box, a head broken up into boxy, uh, almost a diamond faceted, uh, jewel faceted uh, uh, planes, it's easier, easy for us to see what, um, what the the what how the shadows work on a head so for example look at this one it's very clear that we've got all these layers and all these planes of the head and that, that simplifies the shadows so that we could more clearly see what we're doing so um, when I look at reference what I'm trying to do is find those plane changes um, these kind of abstract uh, planar uh, head shapes 
so that um, when I put in the tone and the value, and I'm talking about tone and value and not shading. Shading and rendering, that comes in at, at the end. That's like the icing on the cake. First you have to create the cake, right? First you have to create the foundation on which you're going to put the icing. So um, we have to see um, these, these, these planes of the head so that we can more accurately um, get the, the, the right planes And so what this is here, this kind of like, uh, he kind of, uh, my, my version kind of looks like a cartoon, um, uh, like, a, like, a, like a, almost an anime cartoon, is because uh, this is actually the bottom shape plane. Like, this is like this shape without the nostrils, like, a, like just like a bottom shape here. Uh, let's see if I could, yeah, you can't see in, in any of these. But uh, it's, it's a very simplified version of just this graphic. And then there's a very clear um, plane change here that we're talking about. So it's good to have something like that. And then of course proportions come into play. If you know some of the proportions, you know that um, the good rule of thumb is that the, the top of the the top of the four the, the the eyebrows and the bottom of the nose uh, they they line up and that's about the size of an ear. So I'll just do a really quick kind of a fairly sloppy job. I'm sorry if I'm not getting his face perfect because I'm kind of rushing to get to my point about value. So I'm thinking about these eyes of his as if they were box, boxy. It's broken up into these kind of planes. And I'm t very much looking at them in that way. Here's a plane, here's a plane. And then this nose, because it's got, it, it's, it's very elaborate. This is very clear. Um, there's these two kind of areas here on the nose and it breaks up like this. This is very a very clear um, um, way to show that there is kind of a break between these two sides of the nose and this comes down here. And he's got very strong flared out nostrils. This is one good looking dude. <laughs> I gotta make sure that at least I capture that kind of good looks this guy's got. So yeah, even at this stage, uh, you can see that my drawing so far um, is having the same or similar issue that um, yeah, I'm having a little bit of lag here. That uh, that Dorothy over here, the Dorothy who asked the question, is having my drawing also looks uh, what would be termed as cartoony. It doesn't look like a real, uh, a very naturalistic uh, drawing. It looks like a cartoon. 
it looks like a drawing. And that's okay, especially at this stage. What you want to do at this stage is just to try to capture as much of the proportions and structure as you can. And the whole time that I'm doing this, I'm comparing and comparing and comparing feature on top of feature on top of feature, shapes with shapes. How much space is this? Am I making this space the same as, as that space? How wide are, are the eyes compared to the other? I like stuff like that. And Dorothy seems to have gotten that pretty well. Her drawings looked pretty good. I can't do that. Okay, so let's let's I think let's call it close enough, right? <laughs> I mean, I, I think that maybe this is too. I think maybe this is. that and then maybe this should be I was drawing this I would have to erase it and redo it and redo it if it was just a regular piece of paper but I'm not so I can make adjustments like this on the fly that's one that's the one thing that I really like about digital is that if you're, if you're a little off you can make adjustments at this rough stage to try to get closer to what you intended So let's say that I, I've got I've gotten it pretty close. Okay, so uh, so here's here's where it comes to trying to get get it to look a little bit more accurate. So, um, and I, I told Dorothy to try to get this almost like one to one, exactly the same values, uh, uh, and and that's one way to do it. It's a way that I recommend at first. Um, because you could eventually get advanced enough so that when you do your values, um, they're as accurate as as the comparative values should be. Like like the like, as long as the 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 values compared to each other are close enough, then then you'd um, then you'd get a very accurate uh, a drawing or or. or or figure so I would take if I was doing this uh, uh, with regular pencil I would take my kneading eraser which looks like this this is it's a kind of a gummy eraser like this and then I would and see look I've, I've used the heck out of this one it's just black and it doesn't even stretch anymore but I would take it and I would I would roll it over my paper and reduce the opacity on my uh, on uh, on the line work so it would be lighter, right? And so what I would do a, a sec when I would do a second pass, 
what uh, the, the idea here is to try to see um, uh, what these kinds uh, what, what's going on here well, how do I break this up into a way that, that looks a lot more plainer a lot more like a box right so I would go over here and I would say well there's kind there seems to be a type of a boxy shape here like this right here this kind of thing okay oh and oh, man, i forgot to, to to talk about this so say you have a black and white say you have a color drawing that you're working off of if you have a color drawing uh, it makes it that much more difficult to see the values because you're drawing you're reinterpreting color into value and it is an important skill to have if you're going to start painting, if you're going to start that sort of thing. But do yourself a favor, take your reference photo, uh, take it through a, a photo uh, editing tool or Photoshop, Clip Studio Paint or any, um, you, you could do it on your phone. Uh, just it's a, there's free apps that, that have photo manipulation to, uh, and, and turn your Turn off the color. Turn off the color so that you have a black and white version of your reference so that you could have the values already there. That way you don't have to reinterpret the values into color. It's just going to help you so much. Okay, so again, I see kind of a... The, so what I'm thinking, and, and, and I should really uh, uh, point this out. What I'm thinking here is I'm going to try to break up the this, fa this face into black and white. So anything that falls into the range of values, and this is the value range that artists tend to use. This is a value scale. It helps you find the values it, 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 by, by putting it up to something that you are that you are drawing so that you could see what the value scale is of something like my skin would be I don't know a value of um, I'm squinting to see if I'm trying to I, I, you can't even see what I'm talking about so you could look at it and you can find what the value of your skin is nope. The idea being that one of these things, one of these values here is going to be the, the one that, that kind of matches. Well, if you have a black and white and then you're looking at it in black and white, then, you, then you'll be able to see it better. But it's got the value, it's a value scale. So this is the light value scale. This is the darker value scale. So what I'm looking for is anything that is around this value scale, like right here, sometime, somewhere in, the, in this. And then if I find anything that's around this kind of value scale, then I'll just clump it into one value, which is like the darkest. So I, I, I'm going to clump this, all these areas here, and I'm going to say the, that this is black. This is going to be the darkest area. His eyes definitely fit. There is a, a lid on his eyes, and that is definitely dark. And it, and this, and it, and it kind of falls into the blackness, kind of like that. We're looking for the, this shadow shape here. Value, and that's what we're doing. I'm taking this and I'm just counting it as a as a black so here 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 this area here around this dark area here that would be this dark area here and leaving this light as much as possible so there is this where there's this eyelid has a, a shape and then there's another there's a spot of white right about here and it disappears so this is black this is black this is white but this oh oops 
this is black here and this is would be black or a dark value so I'm breaking up these things into value shapes and the reason why and I'm clumping them together I'm simplifying all the black value shapes and this isn't even shading this is just trying to solve this problem this like how can I simplify it so that the so that all the these values just kind of are are easily read maybe his whole top lip could be part of the of the darkest area and his in in the shadow underneath his bottom lip here and of course the beard would all be darker it would it would match and then we've got the shadow of the thickness of his eyelid would be part of the dark as well as his extremely dark brown eyes and then there would be a couple of folds in here that would count as black dark shadow and I would even clump this area here this area here under that shadow and it and it's a complex shape maybe I'll just do a little uh, maybe not this is just too if I'm, I'm squinting I'm squinting and I'm checking like I'm squinting and if it clumps into darkness I count it if it clumps into a dark I'm gonna count it making adjustments here from my original from my my first pass and my first take see how this is just drawing the shadow shapes here now and then there's a shadow shape here Now I, I did draw this line here because I'm counting this as black. Like like say that I, I'm gonna count this as black here. Just to make this pop. And notice that you know the nostrils are darker than the entire um, underside of the nose. But when you squint really hard, you can see that the nostrils and this shadow shape just kind of clump together and become one shape. Okay, so let's say that this is uh, what I've got, and, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do a final perfect drawing here um, because I just haven't got the time. This is this is something that takes a few uh, quite a quite a bit of time, uh, a few hours. But now that I've got this kind of shadow shape, um, it's a little bit more accurate. It'll be a little bit more accurate to what we are looking for. So at this point. I would take my pencil and I would try to just kind of do a rough pass of, of, of value above the I'm going to do this in a separate layer so you can uh, see um, so that you can see uh, the I could turn it off and on as I as I go so 
So leaving, so this would be black. This would be black. Leaving those extra, those areas of light. to explain itself there. So already it's starting to look a little bit more accurate just because you're, we're getting the, the areas of the right, va the, the areas, we were broke, we've broken up the values into the correct Do that and erase that. There we go. So I, I've broken up the values into their their correct um, planes. Some areas are receiving more light. Some areas are not, and some areas are just black because you know he's got a beard. He's got facial hair. And those areas can be considered uh, the, that the correct value as the shadow because of the tone, the value tone in the value scale. They, they, they fit in the same kind of value range of, of darkness and shadow. Like the hair. And this pencil I'm using is a little bit too soft. Let me see. Um, I'm going to increase the hardness. There we go. I like it a little bit harder. Perhaps this is a touch too hard. But notice how it suddenly is coming together. It didn't look like him before, it looked like a cartoon. But just having put just the right values together in the right spot, after having gotten somewhat of the proportions right, I don't think I got the proportions perfect. And by proportions, I just mean the, sh the, the, the shapes that make up his face are close, are close to what they are in the photograph. So it's already starting to look a little bit more natural and part of it is because the the values in his eyes are, are getting much closer to matching what we actually see in the photograph. And then, um, so at first we just had, let's go back and re... So at first we have this cartoony looking uh, drawing which is, um, you know, sort of what we 
seem to always have when we're doing these um, uh, 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 drawings. We're always like, oh, well, it looks like a cartoon. Why doesn't, when doesn't my, my drawing look more like more natural? So, um, and it's in part because we haven't broken down the values shapes so that um, because our eyes don't see lines, we see values. So we break down the values, the, the shapes that the valley, the lights and the darks are making. And then when we do that and we, and, we, and we darken those things in, then suddenly it feels a little bit more natural because suddenly it, we're, we're seeing the figure in, in a way that our eye is used to um, seeing where it's just, there is no line, it's just about tone, it's just about uh, lights and darks. Uh, and, and once you, if we capture that correctly, if we capture that uh, uh, in, from, the, from the photograph, uh, then um, our, our, our eye suddenly stops going, this is not a cartoon, this is uh, a, a person, this is a real thing. And then once we have the a, a gist of the right values uh, or, or close enough, then we can start adjusting and making. Uh, uh, then we can uh, now that we've broken up into what light and dark. Now that this area is is it, now that we know that this is the darkest area, and we're not going to want anything in this light area to be as dark as our dark area. So that's that's a, a rule of thumb. Now that we uh, we've established our lights and our darks, uh, the rule of thumb would be: don't put anything in the light area as dark as the dark air, as the darkest area here. So that means from this point on, anything that we put in the rest of this has to be lighter than this, than 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 this area, this black area. And so we can totally start doing that. Oh, and here we could make an adjustment by lightening it up if we need to. Uh, this this seems a little bit too too dark here. But what we want is probably to start trying to capture the uh, the general tone. So actually, what what we probably would want to do is. is slowly build up all these things that I don't think there's anything in here that is completely white not even not even the eyes so we could actually maybe add a little bit of gray on everything As long as this gray isn't darker than our darkest dark. And now that we've done that, then we can we can go in and we can start finessing. These tones. And we can, this is when we start really shading. This is when we start actually going, okay, this is a little bit softer. This is coming in here. This is, there's a little bit of light in here. And so this is when, where, where the rendering actually begins. This is where that whole, I'm going to shade, I'm going to start shading. You know, we take this and we make sure that this is we re we define through the nostrils of our drawing. Where's our drawing? Down here. And we make sure that it's as black as it is here. And um, it doesn't seem like it's dark enough. Oh, it's because I'm using the wrong. I just darkened in the wrong layer. Didn't mean to do that. Uh, 
And I should really lighten this up again. So we're not seeing the line work, we're seeing value. This is much darker than this area here, which is a little bit lighter. And so I did tell Dorothy that if she doesn't have, because if you're doing this with traditional pencils, sometimes the pencils don't get dark enough. So you need to have the right variety of pencils that will get to this. Now, it does, it's not absolutely mandatory, you know, um, to have, to, to do exactly perfect value for value. But what, what you want to do, at very least, is to have a, an exactly perfect um, comparison of value. So what I mean by that is your values, your, the, 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 the relationship of the lights and the darks, even if it's a little bit lower key, or a lower, a, a lower um, it isn't an exact perfect replica of, of the values that you see in your, in your source, um, have to seem uh, similar. Have to, the, the relationship has to be very very similar and then if you do that if you manage to capture the the similarity then it, it um it'll it'll still look right And um, I'm about ready to stop because um, this could take a while if I really want to get it just right. Um, it could definitely take some time because that's just the nature of the whole rendering thing. Just, you can, at this point, you can just get caught up in it, kind of like I am. But the whole time I'm squinting, if you look at my face, I'm just, it looks like I'm in pain all the time. Um, but uh, but that's not what it's, what's happening, is I'm, I'm just trying to blur everything when I'm looking at it so that I can at least attempt to try to capture the right values. And uh, some of my line line work here is, is really ugly. Unfortunately, I would like it to be prettier, just so that it looks more uh, acceptable and nicer.
I think this is it got a little too dark here. Too dark. So I would use, be using an eraser to lighten things and darken things. Like this area should be a little bit lighter. You can go in and erase it slightly. Soften stuff up, that sort of thing. This is probably too much light in here, even though it is a little bit lighter. So, not the most accurate drawing ever. Um, I did go pretty quick. But hopefully you, you were able to see uh, some of the process, kind of what I was talking about where um, it's, it's really, it really just comes down to um, when, when you've got a drawing like this and you, you just, it just looks like it's a cartoon because it just looks like you've just drawn a bunch of, it's just a drawing, it's just the lines a bunch of lines you know um, and it looks kind of like well there's just uh, it doesn't look real there's where, where's the realism here it just looks like a like a drawing um, it, it is in part because once again we're gonna go back to this box um, we don't see line we see uh, planes we see planes and light and how light reflects off of uh, of planes and some some planes in the face are so soft and round that they just look a little softer they are softer but uh, they are still planes so so what we got to do is we got to find those light and dark shapes the way that that they they come together and and um, and when we do that and we do that accurately then uh, our eye just kind of fills in the blank. It automatically uh, starts feeling more natural because no longer is it a bunch of lines. Now it is more closely associated to the way we see, which is just in, in lights and darks, in value shapes. And the more accurate your value shapes, the more accurate you're going to, it's, it's going to feel a little bit more, it'll feel right. So this is kind of like midway through. This is kind of not quite right. Um, uh, it's it's still a work in progress. It's not it's not the perfect. Uh, uh, it's not a perfect likeness either. It it, it was done pretty quick, but uh, as you can see that that this even though it needs a little bit more work, it's a little bit closer to to something that that feels more natural. Than, than say something that doesn't have the right values. There is, there is no darks. Like her, his eyes are a little bit darker than, than anything else. And in here, the eyes are as dark as all these other areas, which makes it feel holistic. It makes it feel like w when we turn this off, his eyes in this area, all these clumps of areas are all um, one one value one feeling right as opposed to here where this is the darkest area and then everything else is just kind of nebulous it's just kind of not quite bold enough not quite broken up enough not quite breaking up the lights in in the right way so when we start adding more of the value and more of the tone and more of the rendering which takes much longer than I, I, again, this is not close to being done. This is just the beginning. Like it, it needs much more work. And I, I would probably want to adjust these proportions because they're not quite working for me now. They're, they're, 
it doesn't quite look like it. I think his nose is still too far down. I think I should have pushed it up higher and etc. But uh, as you can see that this is um, starting to come together even though it's not quite his face. Um, it's starting to come together a little bit more. Um, and it was only because I broke broke it down into these value shapes first and then you go in and really just start adding the final the final finesse of the value structure but the most critical part of the drawing is the proportions get get his likeness to look right because as you can see even uh, at the drawing stage if you get the if you get the likeness right once you get to this point it's just all gonna sing it's all gonna come together but, um, but getting it's the preliminary stuff that's even more important than this final rendering stuff because even if I um, left it uh, sloppy like this, at least I would have gotten a better likeness, right? So um, I hope that answers your question. I hope this has been helpful for everybody who's like um, uh, having that problem where you're like, my stuff looks kind of cartoony. Well, it's part because you want to have the same, a very similar value structure, very as, as close to the same values and the same value um, changes as as your source material you're trying to actually capture that kind of um, uh, value design and you're you're trying to 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 do this kind of painterly thing on your final and and, and, if, and if it's too linear and if it's and if it and you're too afraid to break these things up into light and dark and, and, and into a into a, um, a light area and a dark area then um, you're not going to get something that feels natural. Thank you for your question. I hope this has been helpful. I hope this has kind of answered your question and, 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 and really made you think about how to approach a drawing uh, more so that it feels a little bit more organic and a little bit more natural. I'd like to thank my patrons, everybody who's been supporting me on Patreon. You don't know how helpful it is, how much it means to me. And um, I'd like to thank them now. Uh, Aaron Garcia, a hobo, Anastasia, Bill Fisher, Bill Munier, uh, Benny Brook Brown, Chanel uh, Winja, Eric Preston, Eric Salham, uh, Gallo Viking, George, George Crawford, Heather, Ingrid, Kent, Dirks, Crunch, Lynn, Madeline Dupreez, uh, Mary Tro uh, Trozzi, uh, Michael. Rose Musen, Nathan C. Uh, Seabolt, uh, Rain, Shopping for Noobs, Sterling A. Brooks, Steve Howard, Steve R., Tamaram Cotton, Tim Bazarath, Ulf Meyer, William Bell, and Young Stormlord, all in alphabetical order, by the way. Uh, thank you so much for your support. If you want to join in and support me and be part of this list and want to hear your name called out, then go to pay my Patreon and support me at any level, and you will be uh, uh, you will uh, be put into for for a, a, my monthly giveaway, uh, as well as depending on your tier, um, all the other rewards according to your tier. So thank you so much, and I'll see you next time. All right, and bye.